All right. Welcome to the Advent of Code Stream <clears throat> in Haskell 2022. My name is Maddie. Uh, I'm sure most of you know me. I mean, at least you see me on Twitter or something. Anyway, otherwise, why would you be at the stream? Um, we're doing day four today. Uh, day one was about counting calories so the elves had enough snacks. Uh, day two was about a uh, tournament, uh, a rock, paper, scissor tournament. And day three, we were helping the elves pack their bags. Um, we're doing it in Haskell, which is why I have this Haskell water bottle. I got this sent. Uh, I did an interview, or I helped someone with their job interview process. Um, and they sent me this cool Haskell bottle, which I think is pretty amazing. <clears throat> anyway, let's uh, get to it. Um, day four. All right, camp cleanup. So yeah, I think it's a Sunday. Also, happy Advent for those who celebrate, I guess. Um, uh, so today, I think, you know, it's Sunday. If we finish this fast, uh, maybe we'll try and rewrite it a bit. You know, do it a bit more than just the bare minimum. Anyway, let's, uh, let's see what happens. All right, so. The space needs to be cleared up for the last supplies can be unloaded from the ships. And so several of them have been assigned to the job of cleaning up sections of the camp. Every section has a unique ID number in each office like IDs. Okay. How are some of their elves compare their sections assignments with each other? They notice that many of the assignments overlap. Oh, to try to fix the find over that's just a duplicate effort. The elves pair up and make a big list of the section assignments for each pair. Okay. Um, within the first... Okay, so we have these input example, section assignment pairs, and... Within the first pair of elves, first elves and of course, section 6 8. Elves in the second pair we assigned in each two, two sections. Yeah. That was in third row. We just signed three sections. One got five, six, seven, five, six, seven. We also got seven, eight, and nine. Okay. <clears throat> Single digit section IDs. Okay. Ah. Visually, these pairs of section signs. Okay. They draw it up. Some of the pairs have noticed that one of their assignments fully contains the other. For example, 2 to 8 fully contains 3 to 7, and 6 to 6 is fully contained by 4 to 6. In pairs where one assignment fully contains the other, one elf in the pair would be exclusively cleaning sections of partner will already be cleaning, so these seem like the most in need of free consideration. In this example, there are two such pairs. And how many assignments pairs does one range fully contain the other? Okay, this seems like a simple kind of uh, uh, comparing uh, ranges uh, I want to say uh, let's see I've opened the day 4 file here let's create the example input paste it see you don't have to download files blah, blah, blah. you just paste them my clipboard is my download all right <clears throat> So how are we going to represent these ranges? Uh, type range. Oh wait, range. Uh, equals is a pair of ints. Okay, and uh, now read input is going to take a file path and it's going to list or return a list of pairs of ranges. Uh, and we're not going to repeat the same message missing as last time. We're going to say, I am this time. Okay. So this is going to be read input equals uh, read file. Okay. Dot. We're going to 
fmap lines over this. And I was complaining that it goes from string to string, but it actually wants a, a range to range. So we need to fmap uh, map a transform dot lines. And now I haven't defined it. So I'm actually gonna, yeah. So, and this transform function is gonna be a string to range, comma, range, where transform form, uh, this one takes in a string, we're gonna split it at the comma. And actually, these are all single digit ranges. So we actually know that the comma here is gonna be the, this, uh, so we are just going to brute forces. We're not gonna write a parser. This is also like what I like about, I don't know, these tasks. I think, yeah, you can make it super complicated, right? But you don't want that. You just, just do, you know, just make it easy on yourself, right? Okay, so we're gonna say transform. Uh, this is gonna take in a uh, range one and then it's gonna be a dash character and then a range two. Uh, let's say X1, X2. And then there's gonna be a comma. Then there's gonna be a Y1, dash, and Y2. And then it's gonna be the empty list. Equals, uh, uh, we're gonna say, uh, uh, this is gonna be a pair of pairs. So we're gonna say read, uh, wait, uh, take it to int. We're gonna use this function. Import, dig it to no, data dot char, digit to int. Digit to int x1. Uh, eh, I'm gonna do it this way. Eh, eh, xi1, xi2, x1, yi1, yi3, where equals map digit to int. This is called being lazy. Eh, x1, x2, y1, y2. Two, and then I don't have to write a digital in so many times. Y I one, Y I two. Okay. Ah, I call this actually Y I three. All right. Now let's say uh, do uh, read input example interpret. You see, oh, day four. Um, day four dot hs and run it. It compiles. Ah, we get the ranges. Boom. See, Haskell is quite easy. You just uh, you don't have to use all the fancy type stuff, right? Just do yourself a favor and keep it simple. Um, all right, now we have a bunch of ranges. Now for the first one, we want to see if one range contains the other. Uh, yeah, but so this is a good point, but ah, oh, this example list uses single digits. Oh, okay. I thought everything uh, was a uh, single digit. Let me check. Oh, okay. We have double digits here. Okay. Good point, Nottam. Uh, it's actually just this the example list that uses it. Oof. Okay. Then we need to do... Uh, we need to write the split at function. Split a, at... And this is actually quite annoying. 
it's not in preload, right? But we want like a, f uh, uh, we, so we want to like the classic split function, like in Python, right? We just split out the character, it gives you a list, but it's not actually in the preload. It's in like data.extras, the lists, but we don't uh, have that. Okay, so we're gonna say char, and then we're gonna say, ah, okay, let's see here. EQA, uh, A, uh, list of A's, into this list of A's. Split, split on, split on, um, empty equals empty, split on X is up. Ah, okay, let's just look like this. Uh, equals a, a <coughs> take while, uh, no, this is span. Uh, so that we say, um, a x x is so span a x equals okay a of uh so this is a where a, a beginning and rest ah equals a span of x's okay so what is span here doc span so it takes like the so the it takes until it's equal to that character right okay so uh then we say a case huh uh yeah okay so we say here uh so we take until it's equal to x and then we say so this one is going to be like the everything that's before and then this one's going to be the r okay so the rest okay so case r of uh, so if r is uh, empty we just return b okay if r is the character and then the rest um uh, we return a b and a append it to uh split on x uh this is like r prime right split on x r prime i think this will work uh let's check Hey Oliver. And okay, let's check. Let's check what happens. Now. So we're not gonna do here. We're gonna do a. We are going to do. Okay, so transform is gonna take a list of Okay, so we're gonna do. Um, we're gonna import our favorite language extension. Language type applications can i just write ghc 2021 here yes because we're on ghc 9.2 or something so we actually have these things okay um ghc 2021 it's a new extension but it just kind of enables a bunch of things that are actually you know kind of what everyone uses like type applications okay so transform uh, stir so stir so this is like line ln line okay a uh, uh, where so we're gonna have two things here we're gonna have x and uh, uh, first elf e1 and e2 is gonna be split on um, Split on comma, Ellen, and then a uh, the rest. So this is gonna be a uh, er one, er two. Yeah, this is super hard coded, by the way. Uh, e one r one, e one r two, uh, e one e. E2, R1, 
e two r two equals map split on uh, let's just uh, we don't actually need this one split on this over split on a uh, comma uh, of Ellen okay and then this is gonna be a E1R, R1, E2, R2, E2, no, E1, R2, E2, R1, E2, E2, R2. There is definitely a break instead of span. Ah, uh, doc break ah uh, yeah okay actually i i usually like to use span but we actually want to do x not equals but there's a good point from bambi capello see this is why we do it together uh let me see here what is the type of this Transform takes a string and returns a range. Comma range. And what is it complaining about now? Ah. Okay. What it's complaining about is that it's uh, it's not. Uh, that's why we enable this read out int. There wasn't an int. Okay. Now let's see if this actually works. Probably might break actually. Ah. It worked. Um, now I kind of want to write a function that takes a list of two things into a pair. Let's just write that. Uh, L, L2 to pair equals a to come A L2 to pair of A comma B equals B. Um and then we don't actually need all this. We just say a uh, um we say a. Then we do map this to L2 to pair. And then we say a L2 to pair. L2 to pair. Okay, and then we can remove this L in here and just have a big dot. Ah. Right. This one is a extremely untotal function. L2 to pair equals return. Ah. Error. Not a list of two elements. <sighs> Don't try this at home, kids. Um, I mean, you can try it, but this is like adding the code or just hacking it out. This is very hard coded. We should not do this in production, but we get to use a lot of like maps and maps and maps, which is fun. Okay. Uh, yes. Um, okay, we read the input. We got a list of ranges. Don't try this in production kids. Yes. A disclaimer. Just have a sip. It looks like it's product placement, but it's actually just a Haskell logo, right? And the, you know, the Haskell logo. We're doing it in Haskell, so we need to place the product. It's a nice logo, also. Um. Okay. 
now we read the input. Now we want to compare a uh, contains a uh, range range move. On. How do we contain a range? Uh, the classic way is you kind of sort the ranges. Uh, so you have like the smaller one. So you want to you want to have the yeah you want to figure out so okay contains r1 r1 r2 equals okay so gti so if i sort uh the oh i need to sort data dot list uh sort okay so if i have like one comma two uh, and uh, one comma one it sorts them like that. Okay, but if I have two comma one, uh, two comma one, one comma one, ah, huh. maybe if they're equal, it does like that. Let me see. Okay, I think it just works for pairs. I, I feel like I remember that it was like only sorting by one of them uh, okay anyway this seems to work uh, how is the ord who go i want to see the ord instance for pairs oh my god where are pairs defined ord a comma ord b or A comma B. This is the one I'm looking for. Let's go to base. Data dot tuple. Huh? Or no. Let me see. Yeah, the tuple. Okay, yeah, I'm thinking of the functor instance. This is something new. Our tuples are based on the solo. Uh, okay, how's the order defined? Let's see. Switch. I want to see switch for this. Okay, it's derived. Okay. Uh, Hey, Hofsader. I'm just gonna th trust that it works. Okay, I think, I think it works. I think it's sourced by the first one and then the second one. Um, and it, it looks like it does that, right? So if I do, uh, one, two, three. Yeah, I mean, it looks like it does that. So let's, I let's just assume it. Let's. Yeah, uh, yeah. Ah, Elm is also nice. Elm used to have this cool, uh, uh, reactor programming thing, right? But then they, like, threw it out, which was, uh, sad for the reactor programming community. Okay, um, now we're gonna see, so, this is gonna be a P1, P, uh, X1, comma, X2, Y1, comma, Y2. Ooh, we got a follow. PR, X, S, O. Yeah. Nice. Okay. I'll leave. They'll get a notification whenever I go online. Ooh, not bad. Okay. Uh, we sort R1, comma, R2. FRP was cool. I think it was cooler than, uh, and then it had some memory leaks because uh, for some instances you had like, uh, oh hey PRX0. Am I pronouncing that right? PRX0. 
I don't even know. Uh, okay, so we sort the two, and now we have like the smaller is a. So let's check it out. If x1 is less than or equal to y1, and I think it's just like this. So if x1 is less than y1 okay and x and 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 y1 is less than or equal to y2 then then they are contained uh, but i want to see if it's entirely contained okay so Let's see, uh, entirely contained, fully contains. Okay, let's, let's write that, not contains, but like fully contains, okay. Uh, fully contains. He doesn't want to sort, I need to import the data list, sort. Wow. ROC, oh, rock. Huh. We should check out this. So rock is like a language? No. How sad or what are you talking about? Uh, okay, x1 is less than or equal to uh, y1. Okay, and... No, y1 is less than or equal to y2. Uh, yeah, I mean, they're gonna be... Like, it's a range of sections, right? So it's always... Okay, so y1 is going to be less than y2. Um, um, uh, and then, let's see, y2 is less than or equal to y x2. Then it's fully contained, right? We don't have to check like the... Uh, I'll have to look at this rock thing. Uh, yeah, so and then they're fully contained, and we can do it this way because we sorted them first. This is my this is what I think. Okay, um, now we have a pair of little okay, let's actually just do here. Uh, we uh. Ah, no, I can just curry it. I never remember which is curry and which is uncurry. So uncurry, curry, it takes up, yeah. So we actually, we want to uncurry this function. Okay. So, uh, task one. Task one is equal to, oh. task one takes a list of ranges and returns an int, which is gonna be how many assignments? So we want two here. Okay, task one equals filter uh, uncurry fully contains a length. This is what I think it is. Okay, let me see, task one. We get two. Oh yeah, not M, um, that is actually, that is actually true. I think it's always on curry. Like when do you write a function that's like a pair to? Okay, um, we get the right answer for the example. Now let's check out what we get for the input. Do, 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 do. Who needs like curl? You can just go to web pages and copy paste them. I think that's the uh, uh, uh. see. This is like a thousand lines, but boom, copy paste. I went and found your last year. This time looking for another amazing. Ah, yeah, you should look at uh, take a look at that to compare. Um, okay. Let's see. Now let's 
read the input input a I'm actually too lazy for this this is why I like lazy function programming it's uh, it speaks to me I don't feel like doing too much work I don't feel like doing too much unnecessary work which is why it's lazy right it only does what it has to boom 386 I hope this is correct oh no it's too low we screwed up all right So how did we screw up? You guessed. I said it was. If you're stuck, my usual blah 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 blah. Stop ready. Okay. Ah, this is the first one you haven't had it in the first try, but that makes it more interesting. Okay, so I think this one is a bit. But what if I do it like this? Or y1 less than equal to x1 and x2 less than equal to y2 i thought sorting took care of that but maybe not all right we just forgot the other case uh, but i really thought that uh, so i guess the sorting here is just wrong yeah, so we don't want to sort it. I'm thinking like they... I don't... Because I don't fully... Because it's done via like deriving via. See, this is just the correct one. Like we didn't have to sort here. Uh, it's done by deriving via. So I... You know, I don't know. I can't look at the code and be like, Oh, this is the, how the instance works. Anyway. We fixed it. Okay, that was task one. Let's see what task two is. It seems like there's still quite a bit of duplicate work land. He said, the elves would like to know the number of pairs that overlap at all. While the remaining four pairs do overlap. I think for task two, we would want the um, let's say overlap, uh, and this is going to be task two. Now for uh, the example, this should be four. Uh, example. Actually, as people have been writing things like curry. Yeah, we have cases. Exactly. Uh, cases is good stuff. Uh, task 2. Now, this is going to be uh, called uh, overlap. So, here, I want to say that uh, this is actually quite dangerous. Uh, I want to say that uh, I want to say that this is this actually works for uh, no okay I don't know what the sorting okay let's just check for overlap I don't care okay uh, yeah I'm I'm not being super efficient here but it doesn't matter overlap okay. So when does a range overlap? That means that uh, y1 is less than x1. No, so y, y1 is... Yeah, so here I do sort. Uh, Let's actually call this a R1. So R2, I don't, I don't want to sort. I just want to call it for twice. Equals a 
a overlap prime R1, R2, or overlap prime R2, R1, where overlap prime X1, X2, Y1, Y2. We did a lot of this, so I was doing a Easy to check if they do not overlap. That is true. If a x, if y one is bigger than or equal to y x two, uh, then uh, that is true. Okay, let's say not overlap is gonna be a uh, uh, not overlap prime, not overlap prime. Okay, and then we have an and here because of the Morgan overlap prime x1, uh, x2, uh, y1, y2, and this is just gonna be equals a uh, y1 bigger than x2 right uh no x2 yeah uh, i think it's like this uh let's see uncurry not overlap filter not dot Oh, but then we get six. Damn. Uh, oh, I want to get four. Uh, let's see. I'm just going to check if they overlap. Okay, I don't. It's a good idea. But uh, I feel like I've got the other one more clearly in my mind. Overlap. Okay. So when do they overlap? X1, X2, Y1, Y2. Okay, so they overlap if a X1 less than or equal to y1 and y1 less than or equal to x2 or a yeah it's actually just like this huh. yeah so i did uh, i did some uh, video game programming and uh, We were doing these hitboxes, right? And I actually always, so now I'm trying to do it without drawing it, but I always have to like write the coordinate system, write it down. What, what is the case here? What is the case? Uh, what is the case? Okay, so. So here y1 is in x1. Ah, but I filtered not. Now I get four. Okay. Good. Uh yes, I'll send it. You can share it. This is a channel for all languages. So please consider Haskell for your programming needs. It's actually a good language. Um, and you don't need a PhD to program in it. I was talking to the, about this the other day. It's like, um, I think Haskell has a PR problem. Right, and now everyone's doing like Rust, right? Which is, it's also hard to pick up. Like you have to know the memory model, you have to remember borrowing. Uh, 
and I've seen a, a, a room of uh, PhD students and professors try to write Rust uh, and being very frustrated because they don't understand the messages. They don't know. You just want to write something and you have to borrow it or whatever. And it's like an and sign. It's like, it was hard to do. Okay. And uh, yeah, I think so. I think Haskell has this PR problem, right? Where you're like, oh, you have to be so smart to write Haskell. But no. Uh, just tr uh, like in the beginning, don't use like lens. Don't use like these. So Haskell has this tendency of like the libraries will be very general. Right? So it'll be like hyper generalized. Um, and what happens then is that, you know, everyone's like, oh, you should use this uh, library, right? Uh, and then you use the libraries and, ah, oh, Edible Monad is coming. Woo. Edible Momad is my second biggest fan. Little Annie is my biggest fan. She's not here today. Anyway, um, um, so, yeah, what I was just saying, yeah. So like, and then you try to use lens and it's like, I cannot find the prism for this type, right? And you're like, you know, I don't even know what's going on, right? And then you go look at the lens documentation and it's literally like these, it's a bunch of boxes with lines between them and there's so many symbols and you're like, what is going on here? Um, and I actually don't have any idea what's going on there. Um, and then people like, you know, they get into Haskell, they try to use Haskell, and they're like, oh, use this library. You get this insane type error from Servant or from uh, Lens or something. And then you're like, oh, I can't do it, right? And then, but the people who love those kinds of errors, they're the ones who stay, right? And then they're the ones who write the libraries that cause those errors, right? So, they, so there's like this selection bias so what I'm saying is, just write simple Haskell, stick with Haskell 98, stick with like not too much complex stuff in the beginning, and slowly work yourself up, right? You know, you know, you don't start writing Java and go like, oh, I'm gonna have this fully generic container class. That's like you don't you don't do that when you write Java, uh, when you're studying Java, right? So just try to do the same in Haskell. Okay, let's see. I want to see 881 here. Ah. We got it. Ah, huh. ChatGBT explains Rust errors. Ah, huh, but we got it. Um, yeah, I don't, I don't understand Rust errors. I mean, I should. I mean, it's a good language. It's definitely a lot better than C. And you know, C errors is just like ah, oh, I'll just cast this type. I don't care. It seems like it's a, uh, it's you know, it's all memory anyway, right? And then what happens is that. Uh, you run the program and you just get segmentation for core dumped which is a lot worse than a, a long typer right because at least the long typer is kind of trying to explain what you're doing anyway uh, yeah so that was my rant uh, about Haskell in the sense that yeah it's a PR problem right you don't need to be smart to write Haskell you just need to be a bit patient with the... Uh, because it really, you know, when something fails, like it will give you the, like the actual type theoretic reason why it fails, like could not unify true with false or a scolum has escaped its scope, which is true. But what is a scolum, right? A... Have you guys heard of Skolem, the logician who did Skolemization of logic formulas? No. I want to say that 95% of uh, all programmers have not heard of Skolems. Ah. Maybe they did, actually. Uh, maybe they did. But, you know, you get my point. Like, that's that was the... The meta, the current Haskell meta, right? Like, ah, oh, let's just tell them about scolums. And you're like, you know, you usually only get the scolums, right? Uh, if you're trying to do something that you shouldn't be doing, right? And that's what it's telling you. It's like, 
you know, you're really trying to do a uh, runtime types kind of, right? You're trying to put the type of the thing. Um, you're trying to put the type of the value next to the value at runtime, which doesn't work because then you could look at the value of the type at runtime, uh, which means that the scolum has escaped its scope, right? The type variable is around there after it shouldn't be. But, uh, you know, that's not really the problem here. The problem is that, I don't know, what is, the, I, I wanna see what the messages are now, right? Like, what do you say? Don't do this, I don't know. That's also the thing, like, you know, there is a problem, the scolum escaped its scope. You wanna report that to the user, but how do you explain that? Like, how do you explain what they're doing wrong without, uh, yeah, invoking some, Logician. Anyway. Uh, yeah. Anyway, as you can see, um, this wasn't too hard. It's a bit tricky to get the range things correct. Uh, when I did this for video game programming back in the day, yeah, you just have to write the diagrams. Otherwise, you screw it up. And this is the first time uh, this year I screwed up uh, on the first attempt, right? But you have to... Because also, yeah, like here, like we got the right answer for the example, but we got the wrong one for the one. Uh, Elm has greatest error messages. Yeah. Uh, I haven't used Elm for like seven years, I think. After they stopped the FRP, I'm like, I don't know. I use pure script. I use, uh, well, you can run, uh, well, not right now, but the patch just landed in GAT where you can actually compile it to Wasm and the WebAssembly, and then you can just run that directly in the browser. I think they're still working on the JavaScript FFI, so you can't really interact with it from JavaScript. Uh, you can kind of... Uh... Yeah, exactly not, right? Uh... It's a rigid type variable. What does that mean? I know what it means, but you, I, you know, you shouldn't have to know that much to understand the uh, error message. Anyway, but you know, this is what Simon PJ keeps talking about. Like, ah, oh, we need to improve error messages. We need to improve error messages. And there's this nice, uh, well, issue somewhere that's like, oh. And we want to know the uh, provenance, it's called, of a constraint of a type variable. So you can kind of, uh, if you would kind of pipe through the whole thing, like where did this originate? And then when it breaks, you can kind of say, ah, it didn't work and it came from here original, right? And that would be a lot better than kind of trying to thread it through everything. Like, right? oh, let's look at the Nottam's uh, Link. See? It's open. People are trying to see. Pipe variable would escape its scope. Yeah, it's not great. But uh, Eisenberg is on it. He is a legend. Um, yeah, exactly. So anyway, we're working on it. Uh, and it's also the, you know, because I think that I think the mismatch with Skolems is like, you take the code, it's transformed into something else, and then um, it doesn't work. Right? Let me try. Let me try and explain this message. Okay, just me. It doesn't feel like we W A hasn't taken. What is W A? Wasm, WebAssembly. Uh, I mean, it hasn't taken off because you don't write it directly in the web, but like I've seen crazy, like Unreal, like literally like the that engine, like the Unreal Engine demos running in the browser, all WebAssembly. But I think the interop is missing a bit. Okay, so uh, what happens here? We have a, so you're right.
Okay, so this one takes in the y in. Okay, here's x, y has the same types. Y has type A, bound to the type signature of. Yeah, so this is type A. Okay, so length x, y. So we put y in a list with x, right? So this has to be a list of A's. Okay, uh, but this one takes in a B, right? Uh, Actually, yeah, and so this is what it says. The information about A, so this A here, because it's being used with X, it has to travel to the outside and to the, like, it has to, this A has to match this type of this X here. Uh, and that is not allowed, right? Which means, like, a scolum has escaped. A type variable that's bound in a context has to be exported to the outer context, and it, it doesn't work. Uh... I mean, it's not allowed, right? Otherwise, types would just bubble up everywhere. Anyway, uh, yeah, so we did add a bit of code, day four. Um, thanks for tuning in. We had a lot of people today. I, we have got, we got 12 viewers. I think we had a lot of viewers at some point. Uh, and we'll continue. Uh, I mean, it's pretty easy so far, right? It's all about... You know, most of the work now, like, you know, this is the actual solution, right? It's three lines of code, right? Uh, this is like task. This is from the other one, right? Uh, it's the same. It's like two lines of code. Day two. Yeah. It's like, it's a couple of lines of code, like day one. So what I'm seeing is, yes, yeah, so this was like, the solution to problem one and problem two. So most of the work so far has gone into just taking the input and kind of wrangling it, wrangling it into the format that we need for it to run, right? So here we have like L2 pair, read input, split down. This is a function that really should be in the preload because, uh, I mean, it's in the extra preload or something, but like every other language has this function just there. For you to use whenever you want. Uh, I wish it was there. Anyway, um, yeah, we haven't written a parser yet. Maybe we'll do that tomorrow. Uh, and uh, so, what I did last year, I really t wrote a lot of these uh, text.readp instances, right? Let's see. Google. Got uh, I at one point I looked at render dot and now my search results always so I'll show that tags not read p exactly so this is in base and this is actually a, you can get to a read instance from a, if you define a read p uh, yeah read s and then a uh, uh, read a uh, read as is this a uh, string and so so if you want to define a read instance read what you have to do to define a read instance in Haskell is you have to define uh, this uh, reads prec function where oh, oh it's froze for a second there which is it takes in a, a yeah, Google sometimes slow down. Anyway, it takes in a re int and a read s. And this int is the precedence operator. And so if you just ignore that and you have a read s instance, which you can define uh, uh, by using this read p to s function. And then you basically write this read p instance. Uh, and it's just a... Uh, it's a it's a very easy to write and then so what I've what I did last year I was kind of ah oh, let's write this parser this way and then you just do read at type and use the read instance to get it in doom, 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 doom. Uh, just then just drop the first car in the second of the tuple yeah I mean so that works also but uh, what I want to do is I want to say I also want to have the end condition in the case, right? 
negate dot read what is negate dot read ah oh my god yeah okay right so you want to take that read and then read it as an as a not minus number a uh, yeah uh, anyway so i think next time i'll do a read p instance where we just say uh, we enable a bunch of extensions and we can define a read instance for a type synonym which uses the type synonym instances extension and then i could have just read uh, like a range pair uh, read add range pair and then um, Huh, maybe, you know, we have some time. Let's just do it now. Right. Um, okay, so how do I do that? Let's see. Uh, import text.combinators. Uh, what is it called? Text.parserCombinators.readP. Text.combinators. Oh, we have also read the... Uh, Parsec, uh, parser combinator. Yeah, I did. I just scroll down in this. Oh, I scroll down in this list combinator, and I have to press tab. As rp. Okay, so uh, our types in the instance. So let's say instance read range where. And I was going to play a. Uh, Language type synonym. Ah, okay, let's see if this works. I think it's in GHC 2021. So reads prec equals uh, underscore. I don't care about the equals read p to s a of a r inst. Where rinsed equals undefined. And now it complains again and it says, right, uh, lots of overlapping instances. Ah, so we just do new type. I, I think I should be able to do this with language. Type synonym instances. Uh, what is it complaining about? Uh, read. Overlapping instances. Okay, yeah. Okay, let's just uh, let's just send this a new type. So I used to be able to do this. What is the problem now? Uh, overlapping instances. Let's see. Uh, So, yeah, instance heads may use type synonyms. This is exactly what we're writing, right?
Oh. Uh, like this, no? Where do I, I write it right after the instinct, maybe? Okay. This is like an overlapping instances extension. So overlapping instances has go. Uh, overlap. Yeah. Okay. So I usually uh, maybe I enable this, but yeah. Let's 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 leave it there. Okay, so overlapping reach range. So we're trying to uh, write a parser combinator using this. Uh, okay. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So this is actually a monad. So we say do, uh, and then we say a. Uh, So you want to say uh, 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 x is uh, munch one, not that is digit munch one, and then y is a char. No, oh, and then we do char, and do y. Munch one not dot is ticket. Uh satisfying the predicate. Okay, so munch is digit. Okay, and then we munch is digit and then we return x comma y. Uh, and now it's complaining that uh, oh Okay, and this is a complaint. Uh, oh, right. And then we have to say read add int. Okay, so this is how we read a range. And now uh, type uh, elf pair equals type pair range, comma range. Okay, and we say instant instance. This is gonna be overlapping as well. Overlapping uh, read help pair where a read spread underscore equals read p to s uh, e p inst where ep ins equals so this is gonna be a do uh so we get a string here and we're actually gonna say uh, uh e1 is a uh, so we're gonna we're gonna take until uh uh we're gonna take until uh Parses zero or more occurrences of uh, P separated by set. Uh, set by P set. Parses zero or more occurrences of P separated by set. Okay, so this is going to be. E1 comma E2. Ah, okay. See, Nottam is uh, informed of 
about the current uh, state of uh, affairs. Huh, why I didn't have to do... Oh my god. Anyway. Uh, set by... Uh, so we're gonna say here, read... Uh, read S to P, actually, of... Uh, re... Yeah, so how do I use the read p instance? A uh, read press to p reads prec reads prec at range jar Okay, so this is going to be read as to p Okay, we're just going to read it at Zero, and then uh, char com no yeah so this is what I think it should be okay uh, this is read s to p and then we read spec at the range zero we could have also just you know not hidden this and then this one becomes a uh, IO health care and this one becomes a re at health care ah no price great uh, let's try to see where it fails uh, print read at range one to two. Okay, so it's the this one that fails. Ah, add a comma here. Here we go. See, and that's how easily you can write a parser in Haskell. And this is um. Well, I'm not going to say this is production ready because you would probably use like Parsec. Um, So I, I think Parsec, that's like an industrial, that's actually an industrial, well, uh, that's an industrial kind of um, parser combinator. And it parses so fast. But, you know, this is also like, you know, we, we could write a few lines And uh, it would just work, right? This time, you know, we wrote more lines. Now we have a read instance, which is very nice, right? Because we can then just read anywhere, right? We don't have to do this wrangling all the time. But, uh, yeah, I don't know. Okay, but, but I like it better this way. It seems, it seems more natural. And I, yeah, this overlapping thing is... Uh, yeah, because I used 8.10 for a while. Now I'm doing 9.4. Um, so these small, tiny changes that have been uh, that have been going on. Um, yeah. I wish there was an easier way to use the read as instant instance. Yeah, I'm, the best one would you be not tab there. Ah. I can do this maybe soon. Just kind of push that president somewhere in there. Um, okay. So this is a way to do it with parsers, right? Uh, and uh, I do remember uh, 
last year or the year before like when it got like the problem specification was you know an actual data structure right and it was not just a list of uh, characters that would actually it would be a lot better to do uh, uh, yeah. so angular developer are you gonna host your solution online answer is yes I am let me see git status I need to uh, add these uh, I need to uh, how do I do this in a GUI Oh yeah, I do like this, yes, and then I I really wish there was a way to git ignore executables. The only thing I saw was like, oh, you can take things that don't have uh, an ending. But that's not exactly right, now is it? Okay, so this is all the stuff. Commit and push. Uh, days uh, two two four and now this is also funny i need to close this manually and then it pushes ah and it pushed now can i do it like this i want to say open github copy github handling so i have this github extension yeah it works Okay, so it's on a uh, Tridlo slash AOC twenty two. Uh, let me edit this Twitch seventeen hundred everything until Christmas thirteen hundred UTC uh, weekend weekends. Okay, uh, yeah, so it's all here. AOC. Uh, treat low slash AOC 22 uh, so if you want to check out the solutions yourselves you can go there but you know so far they're like they're not very long right so yeah um, all right I think that's it for today we did it today well, we did it one way, but we did the parsing twice. And now we know to use the overlapping uh, pragma. I think before I would just do uh, overlapping instances and I wouldn't even do that. Like I would I, I would use the editor, right? And we'd be like, oh, you can't do this without overlapping instances. And then you click the thing and it adds it, which is like, it's, you know, it's the worst way to do it. Um, but it, it works. Uh, and if you're a lazy functional programmer, that's how you do it. I think Bill Gates said he would rather uh, he would rather hire a lazy programmer or give a tough job to a lazy person because they will find a way to automate it, um, which is I think true. Um, anyway, thank you for today. See you all. A uh, so five o'clock UTC. That's six o'clock uh, Central European time. It's like noon in uh, the US, uh, the, the East Coast, right? And it's like middle of the night in the West Coast. Probably not gonna be watching in there, but maybe. But anyway, thanks for today, and uh, yeah. So join us tomorrow, right? And like keep up the discussion. Keep up the. You know, if you have any comments about Haskell, about other languages like Rock and Elm, keep it coming, right? This is a forum for, uh, not just for item of code, but also just languages, you know? Because I think what a key thing about Haskell is that it's, it's, it's different, right? We're thinking about things in a different way. And very often for me, we're thinking about it in a way that's more natural. Uh, but we, I have seen Edinburgh code challenges that are like extremely, um, they're extremely, um, extremely imperative, right? They will be like, you have it. I mean, you basically have to model it as an array and you have to make a bunch of updates to the array. 
And I think that's why I originally got into Advent of Code. It was this, this uh, idea that uh, I want to see how do you write imperative code in Haskell, right? How do you take an imperative problem like this array? And you can actually do it in a really nice way uh, by using like arrays and vectors and, and kind of the state monad trick. Anyway, uh, Angular developers asking about the Discord. We don't have a Discord server. Maybe I should, uh, yeah, I'll add a Discord server. People can talk about these things. Uh, I'll check it out. Let me set it up before next time, and then you can do the bang Discord and that should work. Anyway, uh, that's it for today, and see you tomorrow. Okay, bye-bye.